If you think it's going to be easy, if you think you're just going to get that business started without any trials or trouble, forget about it. Don't even try to be successful. It's a wrap. It's not going to be easy, but I want you to feel that pain going through your body. And as pain leaves your body, guess what's going to take its place? Success. And so you got to change your mindset, all right? We got to stop looking at pain as if it's something negative, all right? Listen to me. If it was easy, everybody would do it. No pain, no gain. But I guarantee you, if you can outlast pain, if you can get through that pain, if you can get through that discomfort, all right, if you can outlast that discomfort, I guarantee you, baby, on the other side of it is success. Pain creates the prize. All roads to success, you gotta go through pain. They, they all, success, when you travel down success, you gotta go through the road of pain, baby. I told you before, if it was easy, everybody would do it. And you keep talking about the mistakes. You keep talking about the past. You keep talking about your trials. You keep talking about your situation. And I want you to know that everybody that's ever been great, everybody has had an obstacle to overcome. They've had a barrier that they had to climb. There is no individual who's ever reached success and he didn't have to go through an obstacle or a barrier to get there. Listen to me very closely. Sometimes it's going to be hard. Sometimes you're going to look all around you and nowhere do you see success. Nowhere do you see anything that remotely looks like success. But you got to embrace the faith. you got to believe that all Although it's not happening right now, if you keep pressing, if you keep pushing, guess what? One day is going to be your day. It only take one extra push-up. It only take one extra mile. It only take one extra uh, uh, grade. It only takes one extra uh, uh, effort. It only takes one extra something to get you to where you're trying to get to. And the goal is you got to go a little further than the man who's trying to get what you're trying to get. Because whatever discomfort you experience, you got to handle it. Make a declaration to yourself. Declare all out war that you're going to get out of this rut. Got to go up in there and wrestle with it. Will it be easy? No. Will it be challenging? Yes. What do you want me to tell you? That it's going to be a picnic? No, it's not. It's going to kick your butt? Yes, it is. I said to myself, I will never go back to this again. I said I will never be treated like that again. I will never go through what I went through again. Are you going to want to die? Yes, yes, that's a part of it. But that's just what you must go through in order to get where you want to go. And guess what? You are strong enough to do it. You're strong enough. And your life is worth whatever you have to go through. This dream you got, whatever you want to do, Will it be easy to just run out there and do it? No. Will it happen overnight? No. Will it be a struggle? Yes. Will there be times when you can't make ends meet? Yes, that's a part of it. Will there be times you won't know what to do? Yes, that's a part of it. There were days I didn't want to get up. There were days I didn't want to put my clothes on. There were days I didn't want to face the world. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But this is only the beginning. This is not the end. This is not where I want you to be for the rest of your life. Decide that you're going to begin to live life on a new level, seeking out new horizons, that you're going to find more love and more joy. You can either live your dreams or live your fears. You have got to get to a point where you say, I'm sick and tired of living like this. There's got to be more. These walls are here for a reason, to weed out the weak. And you either validate it or you tough it out. It's the pain that creates the pride. Do you hear this? This is your calling. This is your awakening. This is where you are reborn. So it's time to step up. Time to take it to the next level. Time to do it. Stop thinking about it and just do it. Stop with this overanalyzing, the rationalization, weighing the cost, the energy, the effort, the time, the what is, and just take action. Do it. Take it. It's yours. I know something about you. I know you're not a quitter. I know you're a survivor. 
Alright, so I saw Karibu Sana for the Morning Bright Focus right here on Focus TV. But I was straight to the point. My name is Numa Mukuria and I'll be taking over the Telltale Chooses part. Uh, but before me was David Weyula with the newspaper review. And I don't know if he did the news recap, but he does the news things. Okay. Now, uh, you might wonder why we played the pain video, the, pain, the no pain, no gain without pain video. But uh, we are, it is all going to make sense in a few. We are going to tie the whole story together in just a few minutes. But before then, um, you can see I have set before me wonderful, wonderful cards right here. They are the Jimmy Gates, Jimmy Gates success cards. Uh, this one goes for uh, 100 shillings, the A4. Is this the A3 or the A4? Okay, and this small one goes for 70 shillings, yes? Okay, if you want this, what you have to do is send your money, that is 100 shillings or 70 shillings, to 765866. The send 100 bob or 70 shillings and if you want us to go a step further and send this card to your candidates by the way i've seen kids in town so which means the kcse has started so you need to do this and now you have about say a week to do this so send your money to 765866 and then if you want us to go a step further and send a personally autographed card from Jimmy Gate to the student you want us to send it to, you add 50 shillings on top. So if this is 100 bob, it comes to 150. If this is 70 shillings, it, go, it goes to 130. And when you do that, you can send the details of that student, the name, the number they're in, and the PO box to 22646. The details 2646 after you send the money to 765866. So there are two numbers there. The money goes to 765866. The details of the students go to 22646, and we'll send this card to the students to their respective schools all over the country wherever they are these are really nice cards personalized by jimmy gate and if we send it for you they live and come autographed just kindly talk to us and uh, that number that i've just shared now they say that you must feel pain to bring out the success and the greatest fear in the world is the opinion of others and the moment you are unafraid of the crowd, you are no longer, you no longer sheep but you become a lion. That's how our guest Monica Wanjiro distinguished herself from the flock of sheep and became a lion and this is her tale. Monica Karibu. Asante. Monica Wanjiro, right? Yes, yes. Ayasa, tell us a little bit about yourself, like maybe mm -hmm. your early childhood, where were you born, where did you go to school, what kind of family did you grow up in? Um, I was born as uh, I'm the fifth born of a family of six children mm. and my mom had been married mm. previously and she came with two boys mm. and so her husband died mm. so after the death of the husband now what happened is she came to Nairobi to look for work and that's when she met my dad okay. and so my dad wanted only two boys and two girls and now so my first sister, that's Anne, she's late. And then afterwards, there's Susan, she came later. And then here, I come again as a girl. So what happens? He was fed up. Okay. So he felt, okay, maybe I've, I've been dealt something like I didn't want, and now I just want a boy. What happened is, from very early, he kind of didn't want me. And this brought problems because my mom used to tell me that when I was born, he didn't pay the hospital bill. So who paid? It was the sister, my aunt. And so when I came home, he didn't want to see me. He didn't want anything to do with me. And there were problems between mom and dad because I was not a boy. So why specifically you? Why not your sisters before you? Why specifically you? Well, I just feel that maybe he was just disappointed. Like I never want to ones. charge. Yeah, yeah I, you never know. Yeah. I was not in his mind. Okay. But so I grew up. Mm -hmm. One thing I noticed was he was not so much into me. And I learned to think independently. This is what we call today rebellious thinker. Okay. And, what, and that's what, how they took me to me. Mom, how, what was your mom doing? How was her reaction towards the way you She was treating? indifferent. She was indifferent. Okay. Well, she had that motherly love, but then because of the problems at mm. some point, mm. it was too much on her. So she just decided not to take a side and just... Yeah, she yeah. wasn't.
there, so I was there. Okay. Nobody was taking too much okay. attention on me, mm. and so that's how I grew up. Okay, so the rebellious phase, when did this begin? Well, let's not call it rebellious. <laughs> I prefer not to call it rebellious because I'm, a, I'm someone who lives a lot in my mind. Okay. I, I kind of think a lot, I analyze situations a lot. Mm. And so because of the thinking I had to do and I got used to doing, most people think that I'm rebellious. But I have to go through something step by step. Okay. And I want to look behind everything. Okay, so That's what people think that you're head. being. Yeah, yeah, I do a lot of processes in here. OK, so, so, yeah. so what happened, what, what, what was happening during this stage that people call the rebellious phase? Well, what, what was happening is you tell me something and I would question. And you know, during our time, the 70s you, you and 80s sure. kids, it was a kid is to be seen. Not and to not be to be hard, yeah. yeah. So, but I used to speak my mind out. Yeah. I would ask why, yeah. or I would say no, I don't want this, and mm. that's how I was seen to be rebellious. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, how did this in turn affect father the relationship you had with your dad? Well, my dad was just there. We didn't have a relationship, and so what happened? I used to ignore him a lot, and this made him think that I'm rebelling against him. But I had tried for so long to gain his attention and his love, but he was just there. And how is he treating your other siblings? Oh, I think that from my point of view, maybe I'm prejudiced or something, but I think they used to be very close. Because like for my, my elder sister, Susan, who is before me now, if I needed something, I had to go through her. And what we used to do is that we would write a note, give it to Susan, and she would give it to dad. Yeah, so. Okay, then it wasn't in your head, clearly the relationship. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was, yeah, but yeah. I preferred to think maybe it's, it's in my head. Oh no, it's, I, I to don't survive. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What next? Uh, um, okay, I was a bright child in school, mm -hmm. and so after I did my class eight, I passed really well, but I was not taken to secondary school. Why? Well, he didn't feel, he didn't feel I would make it. He just said she'll go maybe two, three years, and within no time she'll start running with boys. Yet you have performed really well. Yes, I really used to perform well. Yeah. And what, what you, I remember what I used to do in school yeah. is that um, I never used to really study. I was kind of a little bit, I don't even understand that myself because mm. I never used to take notes or anything, but I would just listen and then that I would perform really well. Mm. So what happened is even in school, I was beaten a lot. You know, those times there was corporal punishment. Yeah. yeah, but I would perform really well. But I think my teachers kind of learned the kind of kid I am. And so what happened is that they would just give me the notes to write for others on the blackboard okay. while they copied them in their okay. notebooks. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So after this is after class eight and your dad? Yeah, after class eight, boys. now I had to stay home. And then now my elder sister, she had gotten married. She was having problems with the husband. She came home with a three months old baby. I started taking care of the child while she went to work. Mm. And so that's how my life was. I took care of my nephew, and then my mom was sick with hypertension. So I was juggling housework with taking care of my nephew. Okay. And then afterwards, now my mom died. Oh. Yeah. She I'm died sorry. in 1997. Uh, yeah. And so after she died, now what happened is that my dad didn't know what to do with me. Wait. What, what, where are the two boys that your mom came with from their room? No, they're grown. Okay. And for me, I, I kind of, I didn't look up to them. Why? I don't know. I think it was my rebellious thing or something, but okay. I had no one to look up to. So they didn't stay with you I in didn't that have house? It was just your bigger sister? No, they had left. Everyone had left. Okay. They were doing their jobs. They had gone through school. They okay. were in jobs. Okay. Now I, it was only me, my mom, and my dad, and they. I have a younger brother, by the way. Okay. He was still in school. Okay. So yes. awesome. And how was the relationship between your dad and your younger brother? Well, obviously he wanted a boy. So he was. So he very he was very much in love in, with the boy because I remember when my mom gave birth to the boy as a gift. Now they had a church wedding. Oh. Yeah. All right. I think <laughs> weddings were gifts to the woman. For him, that <laughs> is. Um, so, yes. so go on. So um, now after your mom passed away. Yeah, she passed now, away. What happened next? So my dad didn't know what to do with me. Mm -hmm. What happened is that now uh, marriage was arranged for me. Yes. Is this Nairobi? 
We used to live in Nairobi because my father comes from the Maasai land. Okay. But he came in Nairobi as a very young boy mm. and he was brought up by a Kikuyu. Mm. So mostly he has taken the customs of Kikuyu. Mm. But then at some point we went back to Ngong. Okay. In Old Kerry, that's where I come from. Okay. And so what happened is that a friend of him connected with him and I think they just talked and I was I was given away. You know, Gong is not very far. I can't believe it's just here. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, like not. a small distance from Nairobi. That's right. Okay, how old were you at this point? I was 16. At 16. And how old was the husband? He was 23. He wasn't that old. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so fine. it was basically just bringing two teenagers together. together. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then how did you feel about that? Well, I thought, okay, fine. This is it. I need to make my own life and now I have my own home. So why not? It's, a bit it's okay. Too for you to be yeah, I had no choice. And I think that was better even. It okay. was much better for me. Okay. Then yeah. So, time. yeah, there I was. I, I got married and I had to kind of mature very fast. Now I have to make decisions. Mm -hmm. I have someone else here. And what happened is that now when I went there, uh, it was a requirement to be circumcised. Mm -hmm. And I was not. How old were you? Okay, wait, wait, which year was this? That was back in 1997. 1997? Yes. Did it, this, it's just how many, 20 years ago? Yeah, that's 20 years ago. Wow. Yeah. All right, ahead then. No. And well, what happens is that um, on my grandmother's side, she had specified that she no longer wants circumcision for the girls. So this was a dilemma because it was, you know, Af we Africans with the caste kind of thing. Mm. And so, well, at some point I felt, I think that this would be great. Why? Because my in-laws also were treating me as if I was a lesser woman. Yeah. And so I had to go through discrimination. Mm. You try connecting with your in-laws. They don't want that connection. They call you a prostitute because you're not circumcised. You know, that's how they attach these things. Okay. And so what happened one day is I just happened to witness a girl who had been circumcised and I saw how it was performed. And this is now when I understood because some of my cousins earlier on when I was young, I used to see them walking spread or legged and I thought it was something beautiful because I thought maybe they're putting something more in okay. your genitals. Okay. And yeah. And so I would admire because nobody gives you the details of what yeah, happens. Yeah, no, nobody tells you this is, yeah. this is happening. Yeah, okay. so what yeah. happens is that now I get to see what's happening mm. and I'm like, oh no, I don't want this for myself. Yeah, because no. that is basically mutilating you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so okay. I was like, oh no, this is not going to happen to me. Okay. And so what happened is, well, it was supposed to happen when I was giving birth mm. to my child. That's when, when the midwife is helping you. Now they just cut off. Yes. Are you serious? Yeah. If you during not, childbirth. Yeah. If you can, can the, the bleeding and the whatever affect the, the baby thing, because you bleed and now you've just given birth. And so also after after giving birth, now yeah, they now they, they just they, cut they and, yeah, and you go heal everything. What? Yes. Why are you using midwives? Why didn't you go to hospital? Why? Because of the well, that's how place you were in and that's how they're very traditional, they're very, yeah. okay. And so, within my head... Did you know that you had been circumcised? Did they tell you, we are going to do this? Yeah, they tell you. They tell you. This is what is going to happen. And well, at that point, you are a bit... told me, okay, fine. And then my husband also came and told me, and then he explained it in detail. And so I was like, uh-uh, nada, not me. But they still did it? No, they didn't. Okay. Nah. <laughs> so, like, when someone away. is giving birth, and then, you know, at that time, you are incapacitated. It's not like you can wake up and say, I know, mm -hmm. in pain, you just yeah, you can't. you are out Actually, of it. Actually, you can't. Yeah, you can't even fight. That moment. And how did it work for you that you, they, they, they didn't succumb? I just ran away. I ran away. The, when, I, when my labor pain set in, mm. I just ran away. I didn't tell anyone. So I just ran away and went to my aunt, who took me to the hospital where I delivered my son. Okay, and then yeah. now your English, I'm thinking and they're then, furious. Yeah, obviously they are, but they, they can do nothing. Yeah. And so after two months, my husband comes for me and I go home. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, wow. But you go back to the same thing. Like now you can't even share the same toilet with them. They're kind of mistreating you. But why why also, did you share the same toilet I think with them? It's, not, it's not basically because of I was not circumcised per se, but because it's they just, also didn't accept you. me because I had this yeah. people you blood with me. Okay. Yeah. 
they didn't believe so like mom my was father yeah my father is a half caste Maasai, uh, and my mom is a kikuyu okay. but still Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So you go back and the situation is still the same and you're getting worse. the same. Worse. Actually, it's worse. Now you have a baby. I have a baby. Yeah. And now my husband kind of doesn't want me. Uh, he's mistreating me. And now life becomes tough. Okay. What yeah. happens next? So I'm kind of thinking this is not the kind of life that I'll do for myself. Mm. I think. And you know, because I was lonely most of the times when I was growing up. I used to read a lot of books. I love books. And I would see the novelty in those books and I wanted that kind of thing. If it's something like love and romance, I wanted that kind that I read in the books. And here I was, I thought, when I got married, this is what I was going to get. But mm, unfortunately, no. Yeah, so I thought, why not think of something? And maybe I can take myself back to school. And so I asked one of my in-laws, she was nice, kind of, and she told me, okay, I'll teach you how to make belts with the Maasai Shangas, and I'll take it for them to you at Maasai Market and sell. So I made some wrists, and she sold for 300. That was a lot of money. I thought, yeah. wow. Yeah. Now I'm Back going, then, that was, yes, yes, that I'm was going to make it. So after one month, I had enough. I had something like 1,500. I talked to a teacher. He used to teach at his secondary school. Yeah. I asked him, would you be willing to tutor me? I want to go through secondary education, but I want it to be a secret and I don't want anybody to know. So how much are you going to charge me? He told me, okay, because I can see that you really want to just give me 1,000 per month. And I was like, okay, fine. That's Let agreeable. me just pay you. Yeah, so he would come tutor me for two hours in the evening in secrecy. And then I would go do my assignments when I'm taking care of the cattle and goats at the mountain up there. Okay, so Olo, you're calling Olo what? Olosius. Olosius is like, on is like shags kabisa. Uh, no, not, but because it's not really far from Kiserian. And you know, Kiserian is just here. Then why are you taking cows and goats in the mountain? Oh, come on. That Surely. was the life of a woman. What? I'm a married woman at that moment. So but don't you have like small boys who had the cattle and the, no. and the sheep? No. Okay, sometimes we would have, uh, we would have someone who's taking care of it, but then he would come two, three days, he's gone. And you have cows. And they you must have eat. goats, they must eat. And this is where you're getting your money from, from the milk, you have to sell it. Yeah. So what do you do? You have to take care of you it. You have to take care of your yeah. livestock. Okay. So I just learned how to wear a short and a long stick, learned to whistle, and that was it. I cannot say it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say in the bush whistling and oh, beating yeah, cattle I into, used to do that. into a line. I used to do that a lot. Uh, so, so then mm. what next? What happened? So this is a t uh, the, the teacher is coming to tutoring you two hours yes. a day doing your assignment. So it was a, it, actually it was a lot, a lot, a lot because mm. I had a little kid. Mm. I had the cows and goats. I also a have a shamba. Yeah. I have a husband. But with the husband, let's not talk about that because most of the times he was not at home. Mm. So most of the times I was alone. Yeah. And so it continued that way. I didn't get a chance to go and do my KCSE. And well, I kind of felt this is it for me. But I had a plan that one day, one time, I'll use the little education, sign up for KCSE, maybe go to college and find a job and get a life. And so I kept on staying. I had my second child. And somehow the dream was on the shelf. Yeah. But it became so tough because right now my husband is moving around. Fidelity was a very foreign word to him. Yeah, and yeah. for me, I kind of believe that it is one woman. One man. Yeah. yeah. So um, what happened is I ran away for the first time because that time he had really beaten me up and he was about to kill me. And the reason why was because I was sick with malaria. I used to ask for money to go to the hospital. He would not give it to me. So what I did was um, I took money. It was only 400 so that I could go to the hospital. Because of that, I was beaten almost to death. Yes. Did Calling he break me a thief. No, he didn't break anything, but I was bruised, oh, black and blue, okay. if we can see blue from this color. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> so what happened is now he would call me names prostitutes, this is how they behave. And now he take it back to the FGM thing. 
Yeah. Yeah. This is what yeah. Happens, yeah. Okay. So I ran away and I rent a house, 200 bob per month. And this little house, they used to be lodgings long time back. And so they had beds. There was a bed and a mattress and one blanket. I was like, oh, this is great. I'll just buy a stove and some souffleurs. And this is what I'll start doing. And then I started drinking because of the life, how it was, I was and too stressed. And at this point you have still your two kids with you? Yes, I have my two kids with me mm -hmm. and no help. Mm -hmm. And you see, the only thing I can do to earn income is make the ushangas. Yeah. And so when you're selling to the customers, the, those customers will come there to drink. Some will say, oh, hi girl, sit down, sell it to me and take something to drink. And so I, I started drinking, I became an alcoholic. Okay. Yeah, with alcoholism also, I kind of neglected my children. Of course, that's all. That, that's exactly where I was going. Yes. Like, you know, you are alone. You yes. have two kids. You have no help, no family, mm -hmm. and you're drinking. What happens to the kids? Yeah, and so this also got back to my dad mm. and my family, mm. and they kind of now they denounced me. I'm an outcast at my husband's, an outcast at my own home. Mm. So I was nowhere. Mm. And the kind of friends that now I had, although they're not the kind, real kind of friends, they're the friends that will just use you. Mm. So now it was smoking, drinking. But while I was still there, mm. I used to look at situation because this is something that I've just found myself into. Mm. It's not the kind of life that I want for myself. Mm. So what happens is that I'll just look at them. The ones who apparently look like they have a good life, but they also went into something like a bondage. Why you'd give sexual favors to get something in return? Yes. And try as I might, I saw this is not the kind of life for me because I'm not just going to let someone use my body mm. so that I can eat or drink. Yes. And so I really hated that also. Mm. Well, at some point, I could not be able to take care of the children, and my husband came for me. I had to go back to that. But, well, I went, I didn't want to go. But there's nothing I could do. Yeah. Yeah, I just went so that my kids can grow up. Okay. Yes. Right. And so through it all, I, I used to feel trapped. I feel like I want to fly. I can be something more. I don't know what I can be, but here I am. This is what I have. So I have to make the best of what, what I have. Is. Yes. Yeah. And at some point, you can even think, maybe I might just change this guy. Try as you might, you cannot. Yeah. So it was frustration, right? Left and center. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, let's take a short break. When we come back, we'll be talking more about that. Uh, I, I don't know if you've been following the story so far, but it's a very touching story, and, and that's why we brought you about pain and gain. You have to go through pain for you to have uh, something successful later on in life. And Monica is giving us a story. And if you have not been following it, do not worry. We are streaming live on YouTube, and also you can carry us at the palm of your hand. On Facebook, we are also streaming live. But let's go for a short commercial break. When you come back, we shall conclude the story and keep the conversation going. If you have any questions for Monica, if you have any insights, if you've been through the kind of uh, the same thing, the kind of uh, life that she has been through, if you have any insights, any strengths, any questions for her, keep the uh, SMSs coming and we will sample some of your comments later on in the show. It's 22646 on uh, social media. Facebook, that is, we are at Focus TV Kenya. On Instagram, we are at Focus TV underscore Kenya. And on Twitter, at Focus TV Kenya. Keep it Focus TV. It's gonna be easy if you think you're just gonna get that business started without any trials or tribulations. Forget about it. Don't even try to be successful. It's a wrap. 
It's not going to be easy, but I want you to feel that pain going through your body. And as pain leaves your body, guess what's going to take its place? Success. And so you got to change your mindset, all right? We got to stop looking at pain as if it's something negative, all right? Listen to me. If it was easy, everybody would do it. No pain, no gain. But I guarantee you, if you can outlast pain, if you can get through that pain, if you can get through that discomfort, all right, if you can outlast that discomfort, I guarantee you, baby, on the other side of it is success. Pain creates the prize. All roads to success, you got to go through pain. They, they all, success, when you travel down success, you got to go through the road of pain, baby. I told you before, if it was easy, everybody would do it. And you keep talking about the mistakes. You keep talking about the past. You keep talking about your trials. You keep talking about your situation. And I want you to know that everybody that's ever been great, everybody has had an obstacle to overcome. They've had a barrier that they had to climb. There is no individual who's ever reached success and he didn't have to go through an obstacle or a barrier to get there. Listen to me very closely. Sometimes it's going to be hard. Sometimes you're going to look all around you and nowhere do you see success. Nowhere do you see anything that remotely looks like success. But you got to embrace the faith. You got to believe that all Although it's not happening right now, if you keep pressing, if you keep pushing, guess what? One day is going to be your day. It only take one extra push-up. It only take one extra mile. It only take one extra uh, uh, grade. It only takes one extra uh, uh, effort. It only takes one extra something to get you to where you're trying to get to. And the goal is you got to go a little further than the man who's trying to get what you're trying to get. Because whatever discomfort you experience, you got to handle it. Make a declaration to yourself. Declare all out war that you're going to get out of this rut. Got to go up in there and wrestle with it. Will it be easy? No. Will it be challenging? Yes. What do you want me to tell you? That it's going to be a picnic? No, it's not. It's going to kick your butt? Yes, it is. I said to myself, I will never go back to this again. I said I will never be treated like that again. I will never go through what I went through again. Are you going to want to die? Yes, yes, that's a part of it. But that's just what you must go through in order to get where you want to go. And guess what? You are strong enough to do it. You're strong enough. And your life is worth whatever you have to go through. This dream you got, whatever you want to do, Will it be easy to just run out there and do it? No. Will it happen overnight? No. Will it be a struggle? Yes. Will there be times when you can't make ends meet? Yes, that's a part of it. Will there be times you won't know what to do? Yes, that's a part of it. There was days I didn't want to get up. There was days I didn't want to put my clothes on. There was days I didn't want to face the world. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But this is only the beginning. This is not the end. This is not where I want you to be for the rest of your life. Decide that you're going to begin to live life on a new level, seeking out new horizons, that you're going to find more love and more joy. You can either live your dreams or live your fears. You have got to get to a point where you say, I'm sick and tired of living like this. There's got to be more. These walls are here for a reason, to weed out the weak. And you either validate it or you tough it out. It's the pain that creates the pride. Do you hear this? This is your calling. This is your awakening. This is where you are reborn. So it's time to step up. Time to take it to the next level. Time to do it. Stop thinking about it and just do it. Stop with this overanalyzing, the rationalization, weighing the cost, the energy, the effort, the time, the what is, and just take action. Do it. Take it. It's yours. I know something about you. I know you're not a quitter. I know you're a survivor.
thank you and welcome back to the Morning Bright Focus, right here on Focus TV, where we're straight to the point now. Today we've been talking to Monica Wanjiro, who has a very compelling and inspiring story to share with every one of you today. And uh, I've been told by my producers that over the, by the phone that the messages are coming in and I hope we'll have time to sample in all your comments and your suggestions and your insights and all of that. Now, you've not been following the story. Let me give you a quick uh, recap. Uh, Wanjiro, let me see if, I, if I've gotten the details right. Yes? Mm -hmm. Comes from a family of six. She is the fifth born, and the dad wanted a, uh, a boy, but, well, they came out all girls except for the last one. So the dad was very disappointed and didn't have a very close relationship with her. Refused to educate her beyond class eight, and she got married at 16, uh, ran away with two kids, and uh, now she was selling beads and, you know, got into alcoholism to the point she couldn't take care of her kids. But then her husband comes back for her after she, now, even after she's been denounced by her family and her in-laws. That is where the story we are. Have I done a nice recap of it? Yes. All right. All right. So you go back to your husband now. Two yes. kids. Yes. Alcoholism. You've yeah. been denounced. Mm -hmm. Now whatever they thought of you might as well be real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so um, what happens is that my... Other sister-in-law also, she's going through problems, and we become two alcoholics. Mm -hmm. So we would brew our own brew at home. How do you brew? The muratina kind of thing. How do you do it? Uh, she used to do it, sugar, and there are those husks, the muratina things, and you put it there to ferment. After three days, you start drinking. Okay. And that's how we used you to survive. You make it so simple. <laughs> Yeah, Make it's it it's simple. kind of simple. I, I it's not it complicated. No, it's not a complicated yeah, yeah okay. thing. Yeah, okay. so we used to drink a lot, mm. and so after drinking, after some time, I'll just start feeling guilty. I didn't know where this guilt was coming from, and I would go within myself, and I was like, I've not killed anyone, I've not done anything wrong. So where is this feeling coming from? Mm. And after some time, that's when I realized, okay, um, I kind of want another kind of life. I want to experience love. I want to experience acceptance, connection. And I have no one I'm connected to. I was not even going to church that you can say that. Well, for me, church was another set of, uh, a place with a set of rules. Mm. And life also in the society, it was a set of rules. Mm. At home, set of rules. Mm. And they were just too much for me. Mm. I was overwhelmed with everything. Mm. And so I was there all alone, mm. fighting with my guilt, feeling irrelevant. Mm. And I wanted to matter, mm. but I didn't know how. Mm. So after some time after some years i kind of felt no this is too much i either because now it was too tough my husband we used to fight most of the time and i was bottling the pain i had been bottling a lot of pain since my childhood mm. and now it got to a point i felt if i don't kill this guy i'm going to kill myself so the best thing i'll do i'll just leave because i don't want to feel trapped and now the way he was with his characteristic it wasn't helping matters. So I left and knowingly I was pregnant again. Yes. Okay. With my third born. Mm -hmm. And so I just went. At this time I had started making hair. So I was kind of a mobile hairdresser. And I decided, okay, fine, I'll just take care of the pregnancy. I'll not tell him I'm pregnant. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So so again, you left with your two kids, the boys yeah, and Yeah, so where I go, my kids go. Okay. <laughs> I so love the two kids. boys, yeah? Yes. All right. Uh -huh. And so what happened is now I rented a house. Mm. I came to a place in Lower Matasia, mm. now near my home. Mm. And, well, I thought maybe I might connect to my sister because this is where she used to live. I just needed to feel like I have someone. And, well, I would just go around making hair, find something to eat. And after some time, I gave birth. After I gave birth, I had no one to take care of me. My sister just took me to the hospital. I, it was paid by a friend, a friend from my husband's family, who paid my hospital bill. I came home. She took care of me for one week, and now she told me, you're strong enough. You can fend for yourself and your children. And so, well, no clients were coming, because apparently I didn't look like my problems. And so they thought maybe you might like rest for two or three months. Mm. So 
I had nothing to eat. I would go for three days and breastfeeding without eating any food. And what are your kids eating at this point? I'll just send them to their aunt. Okay. I'll tell them, just go there. If she tells you to go away, you just don't leave. But she was she was not the same way with the children, yeah. so she would give them food. But when I went there, it's kind of like she wanted me to think that I'm doing something but so that it can force me to go back to my husband. Yeah. So she was good to my children, but to me she was not. Mm. And so, well, I thought, no, I'm not going back. Whatever comes, I'll just say. So I found myself homeless because I couldn't pay house rent. And I was given a small shack. I'm a batty kind of thing. It was raining, and that's where I remember the first night when we, we spent the night there. We woke up wet because it was raining, and the mattress was on the floor. It was raining all night. But there was nothing I could do, so I, I looked for polythene papers, and I just made it, and made a kind of a drip, put a bucket there, so I didn't have to buy water. And that's how I survived. So what used to happen is sometimes it would get to be so bad. I would just take a bed, sell, buy food for one week. My child is still growing. But then after some time, I was hit with a blow. My child had hernia. What is hernia? Uh, the small intestines would kind of like go in, down into his testicles. Oh, yeah. And yes, he needed immediate operation. Yes. And so I took him to a doctor near there. I told him I have no money. I think this year, if he, he's not fat, just tell me what's happening because I think he's kind of swollen. Just tell me what's happening. And he checked him and he told me, you know what? He needs immediate surgery. Uh, how much do you think? He told me, well, this is something like 22,000 for the surgery. I told him, what? For me, it was like owning an aeroplane, and a, mm. yeah, I, it it had been more than years since I last held a thousand in my hands, and I was devastated to say the least. Ah, okay. I called my cousin; she lives at Kayole, and she told me, "Okay, well, you know what? I have a solution. Just come. I'll take you to my pastor. He prays, and miracles happen. So that's the only thing I can do for you, mm. because she was not well well up. Mm. I remember I sold my gas cylinder." To get past fair and so I went to Kayole and that's where I met the, this pastor he prayed and when he prayed over the child um, he told me okay fine what you need is you need to get saved because God is interested in you and this is why you're going through these problems and I was like what are you sure God will give me problems so that I can get saved he told me yes so I was like I was ready to give it a shot that's how I got saved and I stopped alcoholism and so what happened after I got saved, he told me, you know what, I don't have the solution for your child. You're the one who has a solution for your child. You just go, pray over your child. I told him, I've never prayed. I don't even know how to pray. Do you know the Lord's Prayer? I told him, yes. So he told me three times in the morning, lunch hour three times, in the evening three times. I was devastated again. What did I just do? Why waste my time going all the way there? My child needs medical attention. So I had to have faith whether I like it or not. Or not. It's the only option you have. Yeah, it's the only option yeah. I had. Yeah. So I just went home. I looked at my child in the morning. He was there. He was crying. He was suffering. I just put my hands on him. The prayers. Lunch hour again. I just don't know how it happened. He got healed anyway. Yes. That was a miracle. Oh, my God. He did. And I took him to the hospital. He was given a clean bill of health. All right. So, yeah, I did a miracle, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Definitely. You did yeah. perform one. Or rather, God did perform God one did, through God you. God did, yeah. Yes. So that's how God came through for me that yeah. time. And this motivated me to want to be a better person. Mm. And what happened is that now I started attending church to see if I can connect with people. Mm. But guess what? Shock of shocks. Even in the church, I didn't fit in. And why did you not fit in each other? I don't know. I just didn't fit in. Okay. Um, I'm outspoken. And yes. if I see a problem somewhere, I'll You're just... Gorgeous. And like, I, I was soon to realize that nobody loves smart Alex. Yeah. Yeah. And so something happened in the church and people were leaving. And um, I just... I felt bad. I was very passionate. I loved when people were together. And so I just went to my pastor and told him, you know, what pastor, this is happening. And this is because of what you're doing and blah, 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 blah. And so he was like, okay, so that's happening, yeah. I thought he took it positively. 
but now he did not take it positively. Yeah, yeah some people who yeah, try so, to correct them, you try to speak even yeah. coming from a place of peace and positivity. Not yes. everyone has that grace mm -hmm. to take things, you yeah. know, the way you meant them. That's right. Yeah. So what happens is that the very members I was fighting for. And maybe I'm also like that. Maybe I see something you don't get oh. right. It's nice. It's better I tell you yes. than behind your back. Behind your back. Yes. yes. I'd rather. And that's where you find honesty. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Honesty is always best, and being straightforward. Definitely. Yeah. And so they started fighting, fighting against me. Mm -hmm. So I left that church. I went to another church. Mm -hmm. And I also thought outfitting, but I used to keep on seeing problems. Mm -hmm. I would not keep my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? I withdrew again. I started thinking that maybe I have a problem, mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. because I had not learned who I was. I was. I had not learned how to work with my weaknesses and my strengths. Mm -hmm. I was still in that infancy stage of where you don't even know anything about yourself or mm -hmm. who you are. Mm -hmm. I was depending on expediency. Mm -hmm. So what happens is um, at that time I, f I, I found a job in town as a hairdresser at what do we call this house? Soko what? I can't remember. Mm -hmm. So Mfangano Street there. Mm -hmm. I worked for some time and because I think of my aggressiveness, um, my boss became insecure about that. And so she fired me. When I went home that day, I backslid and I went and took two beers. And <laughs> so what happened is when I came back home, the watchman didn't open the gate for me. Now okay. I had moved to a better, uh, better yeah, house. Yes. Yeah, and so I, in the, I was living in an apartment. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know. He, they were just talking about me and stuff. So I don't know. I, I don't understand. But what happened is that now because I was drunk, something I've never done in my life. I just started insulting this guy, and there were words back and forth, back and forth. But guess what? The, it was a blessing in disguise, as I was later to find out. There was a blind guy who was living in the same apartment with me and he had me. So what happened, my son used to help him a lot to move around, mm. to buy things for him mm. and he was so grateful because mm. of that. And when he asked, who is that? He was told, that boy's mother. Mm. And he was saved, he was a pastor. So I think he made a point of coming to see me. So he came the following day mm. and uh, he asked me what happened, I narrated everything, mm -hmm. and he was about to come and preach to me. And I preached more. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like, he didn't know what to tell me, and he told me, I love your aggressiveness. Can you work for me? I asked him, doing what? He told me, I want you to be a braille transcriber. How do you transcribe, what's that? Mm -hmm. And he told me, no, 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 what I'll do, I'll just take you to school, and you can train on how to become one. I asked him, when? He asked me, how, uh, when will you be ready? I told him, like right now, <laughs> <laughs> because I just lost my job. Yeah. And so what he said was like, okay, fine, I have to work on some things, find a sponsor who can pay your school fees. And then he took me to the Kenya Institute for the Blind. Mm -hmm. And I signed up there to be a Braille transcriber. I really did well. And so after some time, I saw an advertisement for social entrepreneurship in India. Mm -hmm. But the requirement was you have to be blind. And I was like, okay, maybe I can do this for him because he's working a project mm -hmm. and maybe he might kind of, well, I don't know, let me just ask him. So I went home and I told him, Jonah, he was Jonah Simba. Uh, this this uh, advertisement I saw at Kenya Institute and I think it would be perfect for you. Why don't you apply? And he was like, no, 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 no. I don't feel like I want any books right now. I don't want a, any kind of education. Right now, I just want to focus on the project. Why don't you apply? And I was like, that's a great idea. But I'm not blind. He told me, just try. And I was like, okay, fine. So I applied just a day before the deadline. Mm. And guess what? I was accepted. Oh, yeah, okay. I was accepted. And that's I was amazing. like, wow. So I'm going to India, and that's the moment now I started feeling like I'm someone, I'm becoming someone. Yeah. So this is it. Yeah. And well, I was supposed to do a 40 minutes interview over the Skype, and so when the lady called me, you know, they made it look so 
like so big mm -hmm. it will be psychiatrists calling you blah 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 someone yeah. who can see into your mind mm -hmm. but now when the lady called me to do an interview it was like we were just chatting chatting like now mm -hmm. and we only did a 10 minute interview and mm -hmm. she told me i'll strongly strongly recommend you mm -hmm. i love your drive mm -hmm. and so after some time i was like yeah you're accepted Oh, wonderful. Yes. So here you are going to India. Yes, here I am. <laughs> packing my bags yes. to go to India. Yeah. At this point, mm. my husband now had started coming back. Kidogo, kidogo. Were you in communication? How was he behaving with independence? And oh, independence? right now he was being good. Because yeah, because they have tasted independence. No, there are men who are like that. They sit on you yeah. because they, 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 they even women, mm -hmm. they, are, they are mothers and sisters and friends who mm -hmm. sit on you because they want to use you, they want to yeah. lord over you. And the minute mm -hmm. they see you doing well, sometimes they may try to pull you down so that's they can right. them. That's right. Yeah. So what happens is he's coming, coming, and then I thought, okay, I'll need him anyway. Mm. These are his kids. Mm. And so I tell him, this is the opportunity that I have. And for the first time, he didn't tell me no. He told me, okay, I think it's also a good idea. Yeah. you just go I'll, mm. I'll be with the children mm. and so within me mm. you know now he knew like he's trapped me again into the marriage because now he's has and this is what now I'm trying to him. run away yes. from yeah. so within myself I just told myself read my back man I'm gone and I want to go and make it in life so that was the kind of mindset I had at that moment mm -hmm. and so I go to India and here I met a lot of people from different backgrounds from all over the world I had never been with a white person mm -hmm. like for more than two minutes in a room <laughs> and yeah. the very first thing now you're challenged to speak in English mm -hmm. like all the time mm -hmm. sometimes I would forget and speak in Swahili mm -hmm. and well you have to think in a different kind of way because yeah of the cultural shock yes yeah but well I adapt really fast and I kind of became a darling of everyone around there That's and amazing. that really helped me That's a lot great, yeah. yes mm. it really helped me to gain back my confidence mm. and well kind of I was very good at public speaking in school mm. and so when I I'd go there on the stage to explain my dream project everyone was in love with it mm. and at that time i was not thinking of anything to do with women mm. i was too much into the blind rehabilitation okay. because within myself i used to feel like i need to give back to the blind community mm. because it's a blind man mm. who saw me mm. and the sighted people didn't see me yeah he believed in me yeah. when they did not yes. so i kind of felt like it was gratitude mm. Well, shock of my life because after one year I came back from India and now here I was very ready to start my own social project, rehabilitating the blind. I went to Kibera slums, I collected some women there and we were there, we were making peanut butter, candles. But something at the back of my mind, I used to feel like every time I was waking up in the morning, it used to feel like a job. And I don't like that. I yeah. want to do something because I love it. Yeah. And somehow, even when we were interacting with the women, there are some things I would not understand. Remember, I'm sighted, they're blind. And one thing I had to learn with the blind community is that sometimes they'll feel as if you're taking advantage of them. Mm -hmm. You're exploiting them for some money. Mm -hmm. And well, this happened because the very first time we sat down with them to explain my vision for the project I had in mind, they sat there, they listened, and I was like, I'm making an impact. Mm. Shock of my life after it, and I, I, after finishing everything, I was just mm. about to move. They told me, hey, you were supposed to pay. We are called for such meetings, and someone pays 500. So, where's our money? And I was like, what? I had only 200 in my pocket. I told them, no, I thought you were into uh, the you are, Yeah. So now, I f I, at that moment, that's when I realized there's need to sensitize them and to give them awareness on what happens mm. below ground. Mm. And so that's when I told them, okay, fine, if that's what you want, I can be paying you. But guess what? I'll take this vision to someone who can help us grow. He'll give me millions of money, but I'll come back and give you 500. So it's your choice. You either walk with me when we have nothing and when the money comes it will belong to you guys so they were like i think is that what happens so i think we would rather go for that mm. and so um 
my mentor, she's called Sabrita Mbaken. She comes from Germany. She sent, uh, she sent someone from Doshevela. Is that how we? Mm. Yeah, Doshevela. yeah. That's they came and did a feature on us, mm. and that gave these women a little bit of exposure. And so they they used to go. I don't remember where this office is at, and there they met with the Dutch, who gave them a donation. They bought land. At uh, now they are at Dagoretti where they have a vision center, it's grown, it's big, and now that's what they do. So I was still going there, I was still with them, but I used to feel so tired, I would feel irritated somehow, and that's when I realized this is not for me. Yeah, true. By the way, you wake up in the morning and, and, and yeah. some things at work irritate you. And yeah, this is not for me, I don't want. Job, that's, yeah, that you to I, I would even sometimes, path. most of the times, I would, I, I would disappoint them. Like, we have a meeting, and you don't I'm show coming, up. And I would wake up. Oh, I know that feeling. Yes. I know when you're in a, in, a, in a field or in a career that you don't yeah. want to wake up in them. At the end of the day, you're like, yes, Joe's so a good, I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to tomorrow. When mm -hmm. that doesn't happen at the end of your day, yeah. you probably need to do something, something else. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so, what happened is, um, I, I so there, there was this guy, Robert and he was capable, he had an accident, he lost his sight, but, but just partially. And I asked him, Robert, how do you feel just taking over from me? And he was like, oh yeah, it's fine. So I gave everything over to him. Mm -hmm. And now I went back and I remembered uh, during our assignment mm -hmm. in India, I did a project on female genital mutilation. And I started thinking, this thing has really affected me. Mm -hmm. And I also think I have a message for the women, so why not? Mm -hmm go back to the same place where I was oppressed and give them the good news that we can fight against female genital mutilation. And so I went. When I went there, I called several women and again, shock of my life. Who told you? No, we don't. And these were the same women that we used to. Nowadays we don't perform female genital mutilation, we've stopped, it's been uploaded, so no, mm. I don't think so. Mm. So what happens? I'm shocked and I don't know what to do, but I also know it's still happening on the ground. Yes. I've gone to enough ceremonies, so I know it's still happening. Yeah. Well, that's when I realized that I had the wrong approach. So why not provide a pl platform where women can talk? about what is oppressing them. And that's how I started. And then I thought, okay, the women have already gone through female genital mutilation. Why not go to schools where I can get the girls and sensitize them on the dangers of female genital mutilation? Mm. So I started going to public schools. The very first school I went to was Ole Polos. Mm. And I thought, okay, I asked the headmaster, Mr. Pulley, I need children from 12 years of age to 16, mm. because I'm pretty sure they've not been circumcised. Mm. But now when I, I had a group of 60 mm -hmm. girls, mm -hmm. so when we went there and we were talking, they told me, well, I've been circumcised. Only five girls were not circumcised. And how, well, how long ago is this? That's, oh, that was back in 2011. And still girls were circumcised by that, by even now, in large numbers? Even now, they're oh. still getting circumcised. Okay. Yeah. So, we started talking and that's when I, I started hearing stories from them because now female genital mutilation is supposed to usher you from childhood into, woman. into womanhood. Yeah. So, meaning they are sexually active, yes. there are so many early pregnancies, yes. and the moment that happens, what happens? The yeah. parents will not yeah. stay with you, so yeah. you are given off to marriage. Yeah. And yeah. I thought, okay, fine, they still need it regardless. Yeah. But then, now the, the girls who need my message yeah. are too young to even comprehend. Yeah. So what do I do? I'll just go with these bigger ones, yeah. so that they can be there, sisters keepers, yes. they can take care of them. Mm. And so that's how I started the curriculum in schools, mm. where we sensitize them, mm. we, we train them on uh, their legal rights, how they can fight against mm. this. Yeah. And that's what you're doing currently? Yeah, that's currently what I'm doing. But then again, it's changing. It keeps changing every day. But you know, you don't want something that's constant the whole time. You want yeah, something that keeps... grows, something that challenges you, something that mm -hmm. moves into other things and we progress. And that's what that's keeps something right. fresh and you feel energy you feel like you are growing with it. Yeah. That is such an amazing story and, and coming from such a humble background, such mm -hmm. a difficult background, mm -hmm. I feel 
I th people like you should be celebrated more. Thank you. You've taken your advantages and you've <laughs> turned them into this wonderful thing, mm -hmm. into empowerment, into encouragement. Mm -hmm. And many people have gone through things, but they don't have the calling or yeah. even the need or even sometimes the strength mm -hmm. to share their stories and to inspire someone and yeah. to tell someone, hey, look, mm -hmm. these things happen. Yeah. But you overcome it, you move past it, mm -hmm. and even in adversity, you give someone hope. Yeah. So I think that is a really wonderful thing. And is is there a way we can find your social media? Maybe someone at home yeah. wants to contribute to what you're doing. Maybe someone at home is wondering, mm -hmm. like, okay, that sounds like a nice initiative. That that mm -hmm. sounds like a vision that I'd want to be part of. How yeah. do we get in touch? With so you? I have a Facebook page, mm -hmm. Entito Africa. Entito. Entito. E N N T I T O. Okay. Entito Africa Entito. Initiative. And why Entito? And Tito because and Tito means girl oh. in my side. And we are all about girls. Yeah. Yes. So and Tito and Africa. Yes. All right. So what happens is that I, I am about girls because I believe that we are the backbone of society. True. And a girl is shaped from when she's very young. Yeah. Looking at my own life, I've gone through a lot of pain. But then this pain has helped me because I would not have my life anyway. True. No, I would not even change it. Mm. Yes, because because of that pain, because of the rejection, and because of being with people who are not being real mm. to themselves yeah. and to others, mm. I am in love with authenticity. Mm. And how can you gain authenticity if you're not aware of who you are? True. Because you'll be living someone else's life. Yes. And this is the root of all our problems. Yes. Look at poverty. Where does it come from? Because we are not happening to the world. Mm. Because your value will reward you in monetary yes, value true. and that way there will be no poverty yes, and poverty starts from it starts from here yes. look at the women yeah. right now i can hear the men are saying that the boy child has been sidelined but it's, it is kind of true monica come to think of yes it. No, kind no, no, of like, true let's it's talk true. about it it's true it's true the boy yes. child has been neglected so much that the opportunities that the we women have mm -hmm. in this day and age to be a woman is um, is an amazing thing mm -hmm. because the opportunities that women have mm -hmm. and the kind of um doors open much easier for you mm -hmm. if you're a bit educated as a woman mm -hmm. like uh, educated in the at the same par mm -hmm. the way men are educated mm -hmm. as a woman you have an upper hand you know uh when i hear you say that doors open easily for yeah. a woman i wonder where you wonder i have to knock on my doors i have to break them sometimes you see that's the okay let me tell mm -hmm. you let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> women are becoming important becoming ambitious mm -hmm. Long ago, women used to be very, we used to be pacified by the husbands, you've mm -hmm. taken care of, mm -hmm. without a man you can't do anything. Even mm -hmm. they don't yeah. tell you to find a new job, mm -hmm. they don't tell you to ongeza your degree, they mm -hmm. just say you go back to your husband. Yeah. Now you see what has happened. I know so many women who are doing better in life mm -hmm. than majority of the men. Yeah. Even when you hear people saying, Hakuna mm -hmm. wako, mm -hmm. but it's just women nowadays are doing so much better that men who are at par with us, wako So the few who are here mm -hmm. with us, we have to fight for, <laughs> we kind of have to fight for them. Yeah, the operative word, Hakuna wanaume. Why it, is it's that? Not that? Is that the way it's supposed no, to be? No, no. Wako wanaume, but we, men have gotten complacent. I don't know if it's their self-esteem or if it's demoralization. Or confused. I don't know what's happening. They don't to know them. their place in the society. Why? And why? Because we've also taken over. Yes. Because what what a woman does when you're educated yeah. and empowered, mm. you kind of take what is yours plus the man's. And what the, does this does? It incapacitates the man in your life, the men in your life. So what happens? They become sissies. <laughs> Most of the times, they are like boys. Oh, That's what I would say. Because a man cannot be able to stand on yes, himself. Yes, yes. He's a sissy. True. But this is not And a man who is easily intimidated yeah, by things you we have. We need to know our boundaries. Yes. Somehow, we are too empowered, we become disempowered also. Yes. Because it's not producing. No, it, yes. No, it, it's becoming, what, what, what is that when something work, when something you thought was a strength works against it's you? It's working know? against us yeah. very well. Yes. So we need to go it's back to the drawing board. It's becoming a liability for us now. Yes. yes. Now we need to go back to the drawing board. Where are we going this. wrong? Yes. So what because are you Because we'll be crying. We don't have men. There are no men. Women are getting to 35 mm -hmm. without men but it's because you are 
Mm -hmm. yeah. And guess what? Yeah. Right now, even the so-called educated and empowered woman, mm. if she was real and true to herself, yeah, she'll just tell you, I know. Yeah, because I this is how family. we are wired. Yes, yes, yes DNA wise. Yeah, yeah, this is how we are wired. Yeah. So where are we going wrong? Yeah. I still feel that we do not have our own identity. We do not know who we are. And this is now my message. This is where my message is. It's not about female genital mutilation. It's about the woman's identity. Because you have to learn who you are. I think I'll get on board with that one. Yes. I also feel strongly about that, yeah. about the woman identity. And the yes. woman has been defined as so many things in mm -hmm. so many ways mm -hmm. that, that the millennials that we have right now mm -hmm. are all over the place. Yes. And nowhere good. Very right now, young girls I'm, seeing. I'm depending on the media yeah. to tell me who I am. Yeah. I'm depending on the church mm -hmm. to tell me who and I my am. Friends and my whatever. friends, I want to be seen like the Kardashian. And there's so or, much pressure. Like I can imagine when we were growing up, mm -hmm. Personally, for me, there was not so much pressure as I see young girls nowadays. They have so much pressure to be yes. a certain thing and do certain things mm -hmm. in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Now, by the way, it mm. has to be so difficult <laughs> growing up, right? There's so yeah. much you have to attain. There's so much you have to be mm -hmm. outside of yourself. Uh -huh. yes. So this kind of confuses us. Yes. We do not know where to stand. Mm. We do not know how, how where our role is. But you know what's what going to happen? Do. Now, what, what? The, what is going to happen because of empowering women and mm -hmm. broadening this so much that mm -hmm. we do not know where the reach is, we're mm -hmm. going to give back men the power. We because the way I'm seeing right now, we have to. Because no, actually, it's already started. Because mm -hmm. so many girls I'm seeing right now, they've mm -hmm. lost the plot, Kabisa. Mm -hmm. Now the men are starting to come back. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, I've not seen it yet. I'm yet to see it. it. But seen well, it. maybe because we are from different parts. From where I am, <laughs> we are still um, empowered. But I'm um, 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 better yeah, empower. Yeah, but we need wow. to come back. Yeah. Because one thing I already understand is that once the woman knows her power, mm. she's a very powerful. Let's. Let's talk about it. Yes. A woman is a very powerful Actually, being. Actually, to be honest, women are very intelligent. Than men. intelligent. And, and, and it's not even yes. like about being a feminist, it's just fact. Mm -hmm. yes. And the most powerful person here between the man and the woman is sub supposed to do the S word, submit, yes. which we do not want to hear. Yeah. Why? Because submission is not the way it's taken to be. It's submission like was I can to see us are wrong by our parents. From. Yeah, I can see from where you're coming from. I'll Keep it low so that I can be able to bring you and take you to the place I want you to yes, be. Yes. That's you what submission is. It. Because it's power under control. Yes. But now, right now we are too proud. Mm. Too proud to do anything to help our sons, to help our brothers, mm. our uncles or anything. Mm. And that has taught me a lot because sometimes I would need a male in my life mm. to speak a word or to tell me which direction. Now I've had to become the kind of person I want. Mm. I become my brother when I want to be. <laughs> I think we're really a bit of time. <laughs> I think <laughs> these are starting to other things now. There's a discussion between us now. Yes. I yes. So, so you can also join the discussion on social media. That is Facebook, Focus TV Kenya, Instagram, Focus TV underscore Kenya, and on Twitter, 8 Focus TV Kenya. The SMS number is 22646. Now, uh, let us, let us, let us, we are supposed to end at 9.30, it's now 9.46. <laughs> uh, so, so, so tell us, where is your husband right now? Are you still together? Did you go back? Oh, How are your sons? Yeah. Oh, okay. Where After are you right now in your personal life? He was there. Yeah. He, he got married, by mm. the way, mm. in my own house. He called me when I was in India and he told me, okay, you know what? You're not here and they need someone to take care of me. You told me married. Blah, blah, blah. Can I have a girl here? I told him, go ahead. You do you. Yeah, just go ahead. Mm. So he married in my own house. Mm -hmm. And so when I was just about to come they, they moved out yeah. and um, well they left and that was it but we were still bringing the kids up together yeah. we had a, this kind of friendship relationship yeah. and he would even come spend the night at our place sometimes yeah. but we had no relationship yeah. and so in 2014 November yeah. he passed on oh. he had an accident and he died oh, sorry. yeah okay. and this is when now everything everything that had been happening previously came mm. to fruition because I did not even attend his burial. Yeah. An outcast will always remain an outcast. They couldn't allow you? Yeah. Well, kind of, my pride also came into yeah, place. I can imagine. After yeah, because been through, I'm not, yeah, yeah, I'm not um, I was like, mm. I, I'm not going to force them mm. anything. Mm. He's dead. And that's that. And um, I appreciate the kind of life we had been. And I, at some point, I also realized he was very instrumental. 
in my life, mm -hmm. in me becoming who I am today. Mm -hmm. Because had he been the perfect husband, I would be somewhere at all yes, yes. Harding cattle. Yes, yeah. But right wife. now, what happened? He gave me a voice. Yes. So I usually tell people, this man was created a blessing in just for me. Yes. And he was perfect for Sometimes me. Sometimes people will come to give you problems so that they can push yeah. you. And yeah. they say when God wants to want you to grow, he makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. he, uh, and that is drawn with a um, fish mm -hmm. that's got it too big for its bowl. That's right. So you need a bigger boat for you to continue. That's right. And so, so thank you so much, Monica. Again, thank it's you. in total. And Tito Africa Initiative. And Tito E N T A I T O. And Tito Africa Initiative. That's on Facebook. Yes. And if you want to join her initiative, if you have any insights, if you have any questions for her, if you know someone who needs a voice or who can be helped by this initiative, you want to join and uh, help her empower other women, kindly join that N T T O Africa Initiative. That's on Facebook. We have enjoyed your company, and we do not have time to go through all of the comments. But I know you are talking on Facebook. <laughs> So uh, I know you've been inspired and it's evident you, you shouldn't ever be ashamed of a scar. It simply means you were stronger than whatever tried to harm you. Uh, I was staring you through this uh, morning Bright Focus episode of Telltale Tuesdays. My name is Mukulia and Aria. Mukulia and Alia, we had uh, Vayula David, who was my co-host earlier on. And we appreciate your viewership every morning. We are very happy when we know that you're watching and you give us feedback on social media, on SMS and all other platforms. It makes us happy and it makes us know that what you're doing here is worthwhile to continue interacting with us. I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we have Women Chat Wednesdays where we'll be discussing. I, I can't remember the topic for tomorrow. I wish you'd come and sit in. I like the way you are outspoken. We have yeah. issues uh, that uh -huh. touch on women, and it's uh -huh. women chat and uh -huh. women. Like we have men yeah. and women, and we have a panel that discuss. You know, uh -huh. um, I think I was told by my producer about this. The topic for tomorrow is, I don't know, but I know uh -huh. it's going to be it's going to be amazing. Uh -huh. And um, you can check our social media pages. We are going. You're going to have the topic for tomorrow there. Uh -huh. So kindly join us with your. Liberal minds because we look at liberal, 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 liberal minds. minds. Liberal I'm minds. talking so fast. Liberal minds on Wednesday for the Women Chat Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I've been Nimumukri. Have a blessed day. Uh, keep it focused, TV. We all have a vision inside of us. A vision that could change the world we live in. A vision for which we would drop anything if only we knew it would succeed. We stand on the threshold of change, yet we stay there. The risk is too great, the cost too high. The storm ahead seems too powerful for us to handle. And then we hear it. A quiet whisper at first, turning into a resounding roar in our hearts. Be strong and courageous. At the heart of vision, we must find courage. Courage to step out and be seen Courage to explore and pioneer. Courage to leave the old and embrace the new. Courage to stand your ground and courage to run the race. Courage to give it everything we have, heart and soul, because he said, I'll be with you. I won't give up on you. To be strong and courageous, to risk the journey and to follow the vision God has placed inside of us. This is our call as leaders.